Hello, hello, everybody. Happy President's Day. Happy Monday. Let me just check if I am good here. All right. We look good. All right. Live and direct from San Diego here. All right, West Coast, so still pretty early, 5 o'clock. All right, I am super full because we just barbecued. We just barbecued for President's Day. All right, we had some burgers, so I am super full right now. All right. But we are good to go. I know I put the time, uh, the time I had put it for 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock Pacific. Uh, I caught it like the last hour when I was setting up. So if you are watching us on the replay thinking that we're at 8, all right, my bad, but usually I want to keep it Mondays, 5 p.m. Pacific time. All right, so today we have a very good show today. All right, let's see a little preview of what we got. Bam, we got the logo right here. All right, we got the eagle. Bam, right here, all right. Got the eagle. All right, so it should be a good one. Uh, this, this live, I would put it up there with, you know, more, um, more of the complicated side of digitizing. So, and difficulty is all relative, right? Especially if you do something over and over and over and over and over and over and over, everything becomes easy. But if you do it like for the first time, of course, it's going to be hard because nothing makes sense. All right. So here, I'm going to kind of show you some stuff where you gotta got to change stuff around, all right? Uh, traditional, traditional digitizing doesn't always work, all right? So you can see the border. We don't have like a nice circle rounded or a nice box shape surrounding us, right? We have like sharp turns, sharp corners. So we got to change stuff up a bit, all right? So you kind of kind of see the final outcome here, okay? Um, I do want to put this file as a free download, but I do got to make one little small change to the file and then I want to record it. So give me by tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow, um, I should have this file so you can go ahead and kind of dive into it, dissect it, measure uh, certain items here. All right. So just give me uh, till tomorrow. I'm going to record the stitch out. All right. But it stitched out pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna kind of focus on certain corners. Um, this is just flat embroidery. All right, we could do a part two and turn it into 3D puff, all right? But I always like to start with flat, that way um, kind of kind of get a sense of logos. And uh, I think uh, flat, anytime I'm doing a sample for somebody, I like to do flat because there's more uses for a flat embroidery then there is a 3d puff usually 3d puff is hats only but flat embroidery i mean sky's the limit on on uh, flat embroidery so i always like to start with flat and then move my way up and do a uh, a 3d puff especially to make sure all the push pull the, the overlaps is all good all right all right so i uh, want to welcome everybody i know last week uh, I had the pre-recorded video because okay, I was at work. Uh, I do want to thank everybody that stopped by uh, yesterday's show. I was actually watching it. And sometimes I like watching it because, believe it or not, I learned something. Like when I'm, when I'm, when I'm teaching something, some stuff, I'm kind of like it's automatic. Like I'm just kind of on autopilot uh, teaching or showing something. But sometimes I don't kind of stop and think about what I just said, right, because it's just automatic thinking for me. But last week when I'm watching the, the when I'm watching the video, I'm actually learning something and I go back. I'm like, hold on, let me let me go deeper and look more into that. All right. So I think the show, uh, especially the classes, always good information, whatever level you're at. I always like to start super basic and then throw a couple of stuff here and there. Um, more like the advanced stuff. But like I said, advanced embroidery, expert embroidery, it's all relative. It all depends what you've done, your experience. So the more you do something, 
right? Because some people might think hats is expert level, right? To me, a normal flat hat is as easy as can be. It's like the easiest thing in the world, right? Um, but there's other stuff in embroidery that people can do so easy, but it might take me a while just because I haven't done it over and over and over and over. But anything, all right? Especially if you're intimidated with hats, all right? I'll tell you, always start with something simple. Um, start with, I would say, what I like to do. This is my personal uh, favorite way that I like to um, learn digitizing and stitch out. I like to digitize. Uh, my favorite logos. So certain corporate logos, stuff that I'm going to keep in-house that I'm just going to practice on my own. All right. I like to I like to practice on corporate logos because corporate logos are so basic, so simple. And if you can make a corporate logo look nice, sharp, clean, all right, sky's the limit after that. All right. Because that's really where the money's at. All right. Especially if you're in embroidery for the money or you want to, you know, at least pay your expenses of embroidery logos okay logos 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 and you're gonna learn that the more professional a logo is the easier it is to embroider because sometimes you'll get somebody that's not let's say that's not like an expert in graphic designing like sometimes you'll see an owner creating their own logo right they're they're not following a lot of the graphic design rules they're breaking all sorts of rules to the point where there's so many colors there's so many inconsistent like the, the the design is not centered correctly and then it shows in your embroidery like you're trying to embroider something and it doesn't come out nice because it wasn't designed nice all right so just my two cents if you're trying to learn embroidery if you're trying to learn digitizing all right the best thing to do is practice on your favorite or i would even say your dream customer like think about who your dream customer is practice to the point where you have that logo designed perfect. So you never know one day they call you up and you're ready to go. All right. All right. Uh, do some quick shout out. Good evening, Cindy. Aldell, Audrey. All right. So just a heads up. All right. Audrey, uh, channel member for the longest, right? Been following the channel for the longest. She actually sent me a message couple of weeks ago all right it was a while ago all right about the about the egos logo and had some question on it and i said hey you know what instead of me trying to write a sentence or a paragraph trying to explain about this logo how about i go ahead and show everybody as a class because i do like questions i do like um of course i like easy questions right everybody likes easy questions because you could just answer them right away uh sometimes there are questions that are not as easy to answer in one or two sentences or maybe even 10 sentences okay because sometimes i have some questions for you okay for example if you having problem with your machine right there is no way i could troubleshoot over the computer because there's a lot of things that i need to see and a lot of questions that i might have until we start before we start troubleshooting all right so if you do ask questions, I do appreciate it. All right. A lot of the shows, a lot of the, the episodes are uh, inspired by questions. All right. Such as today's live. All right. Cindy from Odessa, Texas. Nurtured by nature from Pennsylvania. All right. Roller, roller here. TMG, Orlando in the house. TMG, Mashid. All right. Nice to see you. All right. We got Michigan in the house. Julie. Tennessee. All right. So we got West, Mid Midwest, Donna, Crossville, Tennessee, Marisa, of course, for Southern Cali, MM Customs, Southern Cali. All right. Southern Cali in the house. Daisy, Georgia. All right. I'm biased in the house. Bam, bam. Don Hatter, Fly Eagles, Fly. All right. And, and one thing that I like to do. I'm just, I'm not a real fan of like any team specifically. It's not like this is my favorite team. All right. But I am a fan of logos. I like, especially when I'm seeing the games, right? I just like uh, sports competition. But when I do see certain logos, sometimes it inspires me. Like I'll write it down. And I'll say, hey, look into this logo. 
or I'll look in the history of a certain logo, see see who designed it um, and the meaning behind the logos. And then if I have time, I'll go ahead, I'll digitize it and um, just kind of save it. I have like hundreds and hundreds of logos just kind of saved. Um, and it's kind of like the best way because believe it or not, customer is going to come to you, ask you for a certain logo, and it's going to remind you of another logo that you did before. All right. And then you you could kind of have an idea of what settings, of what obstacles you might see, um, your sequence, what's going to go first, all right, stuff like that. All right. We got Barb. How you doing, Barb? Uh, all right. Living my dream, trading. Good evening. All right, all right. Heart and hustle printing in the house, all the way from Georgia. All right, Javette, the Far Rock, New York City, NYC in the house. All right. And then I'm gonna have this file. So just give me uh, today, tomorrow, actually. All right, because I got to do part two of my barbecue right after this show. All right, but tomorrow I'm going to stitch it out again. This is just a little tiny change that I want to make. All right, but for the most part, all right, I'm going to kind of go over. Hold on, let me see. My nose isn't close enough. Oh. Uh -huh. All right, the color, I mean, the light's super bright, so kind of off. All right. Um, big thing that I'm looking for, gaps, right? I'm looking for gaps in the design. Can't really see too much. Actually, you don't really see gaps. This is super bright too, like super zoomed in, bright. So of course you're gonna find every mistake in the book if you can't see a mistake, all right? But for the most part, let me see. I, I wanna show you different angles. All right, Big. I think a big challenge here is the eyes. You're going to see what I'm talking about. We're talking about super, super mini me stitches right there. All right. All right. I do like to show like zoomed in the, the actual stitch out because really that's the only way you're going to learn is by the actual stitch outs. We could talk about theory all day, but if you don't really see, right, because I'm going to talk about overlaps today. All right, you're going to see how big, how much overlap plays a role in this design, right? Let's actually, let's, uh, let's zoom in here. All right, actually, before we start this right now, all right, quick announcements. Uh, all right, we got more people in the house. All right, we got a jam-packed house today. All right, welcome. Uh, it's a holiday today. I know the post office was closed. All right, it kind of tricked me because I checked on Google Maps and it said it was open, but I checked the website. So I didn't know I was like 50 50. We went, it was closed. All right, but it's all good. All right, quick announcements. All right, you see in the back the Mighty Hoops. I got the free shipping. Of course, life is so much easier when you have the Mighty Hoops, right? I'm pretty sure you've heard my story like 1 million times. Uh, what motivated me to get Mighty Hoops? And it was that darn baby bag, right? Diaper bag, right? That diaper bag, super expensive diaper bag. I try to use like those green hoops that come with the machine, right? I almost busted my knuckles trying to get that like tined out, right? It, it was... Um, it was a no go from there, right? And somebody told me like, "Hey, why don't you just use Mighty Hoops? Like, like why are you trying to why are you trying to do everything all hard, right? Try Mighty Hoops, easiest thing in the world, right? But that was the start. Um, but I do have um, Mighty Hoops free shipping. It's in the description, all right? Hopefully, I updated the description. Let me check if I updated the description. Oh. Oh, it doesn't show. All right, I'll check it after. We'll check it after. But we'll put it on the description. All right, also, we got a uh, candle thread. All right, super, super popular thread right now. Um, I like the shine, right? The shine, it has like a distinct shine that kind of makes your design pop out. 
all right? Especially, especially 3D Puff, all right? For those who do 3D Puff, right? But of course, they have so many colors that whatever color you're looking for, all right, they have like that specific color to, to make it pop out, all right? Uh, I do have Amazon links, so I always get questions like, what needles do I use? What bobbin? Like basic stuff, right? Basic stuff that I've been using forever. Uh, I have an Amazon store or link, okay? You can check it out, see kind of like the stuff that we have. I do got to update it. Uh, just, I got to actually update because I have it broken down in sections. I have like the embroidery side. I have like the camera stuff that I use. Uh, a lot of my camera stuff I bought like so long time ago that they don't even sell some of this camera gear that I have, all right? But uh, I try to find if it's still there available, right? Uh, actually, I removed my camera stuff because why am I going to promote my old cameras, right? It doesn't make sense. Might as well buy like the, the upgraded stuff, right? So it doesn't make sense. If I do have cameras on my electronics, all right, um, it's, it's coming off because, of course, when I recommend something, I want I want to give you like the best recommendation, right? Uh, of course, I'm using like a great camera, right? But I do get questions like, "Hey, what camera do you use?" All right? Like to shoot photos. This is just uh, random stuff, right? Here. Oh, still on, right? I use a Canon. This is the. Uh, the Mark, the Mark 5D, well, the 5D Mark III, right? They don't even make this since like 2014, right? So it wouldn't make sense for me to tell you to buy this um, Mark III camera, right? All right, just FI, but embroidery-wise, all right? In my Amazon shop, in my embroidery-wise, a lot of the stuff that I've been using, okay, I, I really don't change, like, like magnetic bobbins, um, a lot of just stuff, right? Like the, the embroidery to make sure you, you're centered correctly and all that stuff, all right? All right, now let's get to business, all right? If you have a question, all right? Um, all right, Claudia Go Claudio Gomez. All right, I'm gonna answer this because actually for some reason lately, especially this year, I've been getting this question a lot. All right, how can I reach you for a logo? Uh, digitizing, I do not do digitizing. Uh, as a service, okay. I only do digitizing uh, for in-house customers and projects that I'm working on. All right, so I do not do digitizing. Maybe sometime in the future, but I know that with digitizing, there's a lot of customer service uh, that's needed, a lot of back and forth because there's no such thing as um, a digitizer send you a file and it's always going to be 100% perfect especially if you're working with hats, sometimes with hats, all right, it's little tweaks here and there. So I do not, I do not serve, uh, I do not do digitizing as a service. All right. Um, all right, bam, bam. Uh, all right, if you have a question, if you put a Q next to it, it's easier for me to find it. Um, and then this is really what we're gonna talk about, life. Yes, please tell us about overlap. Had trouble doing this with several designs and fonts. That's like, I'm going to say that's really the hardest part about digitizing. If it wasn't for overlap, digitizing would be like the easiest thing in the world. All right. But that's where our, the more practice you get, like your intuition kicks in. Where like you're, you get muscle memory and you know certain certain shapes okay, require more um, more overlaps, more push-pull. Um, and then I will, I'll, I'll post, uh, any recommendation for digitizing service. I'm going to, I'm going to link my digitizer because believe it or not, I do send my, my files when, when time is limited. Of course I send my stuff out. I send it out to one of the most popular, famous digitizer in the whole world, Vitor. All right. Vitor. Digitizing, V-I-T-O-R, digitizing. You Google that, that'll be the number one, the number one uh, result right there, all right? And yeah, you're good right there. All right, let's start, all right? We're, I think we're good to go. All right, so 
before we start, I got some questions for you. All right. So when we see this logo here, right, the ego logo, and you could also take this as uh, there's a lot of high school, a lot of park logos, very similar to this, right? I've even saw somewhere it's exactly the same one. Okay. So it's either similar, same, or, you know, you could even use your imagination, right? The shape, it looks like lightning bolts. All right. So you can always learn from any, any logo, right? The more logos you have under your belt, the more logos you have stitched out, the more muscle memory like your brain has, especially if you write down notes. It's always good to print out your print job, your print sheet, and then right next to it, write down some notes, like put an arrow next to certain areas that need to get changed. All right, so some of the questions that I got here, all right, as we're looking at this, is, all right, actually I got like 20 questions, but we're gonna limit them to some. As a digitizer, so we're gonna put on our digitizer hat, even if you don't digitize, you still want to think like a digitizer because if something doesn't come out right, we got to know who to blame or we got to know how to how to communicate with our digitizer. Right. We can't just start throwing random stuff and start making stuff up. Right. Or thinking. Right. Because let me go. Let me go big right here real quick. All right. Because every time in the forums. Right. If I if I'm going to like quickly scroll through the forum. We know that if somebody's having an issue, if someone's like, hey, I'm, my overlap's not working, right? You're always going to get like the same three answers. Somebody's going to say, hey, increase your density, right? And then sometimes, right, especially if you understand like uh, the rules of digitizing, sometimes you're looking at these responses like that doesn't make sense, right? Uh, or it may make sense, but you need more information on it. Right. Or but usually that's the, the number one answer. Increase the density. Right. Oh, I'm getting overlap or I'm getting anything. The number one question is always increase the density, which can be true, but it's not always the case. All right. There is a ton of other settings or usually it's the overlap. All right. Then I do appreciate that. Go ahead. Hit that thumbs up. Right. Let. YouTube, let Facebook, so we're live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, right? Let them know that we are in the building, live and direct, right? We got Victorville in the house, all right? Up north right there on the way to Vegas. Detroit in the house, all right. All right, yeah, go ahead. It takes you half a second just to go pop, pop, all right? So I do appreciate that for the reminder, like me, right? Like my brain, my brain is locked in right here. So I, I, I don't, I forget about like the little basic stuff such as hitting likes. All right. All right. Back to my questions that I have. All right. So we're looking at this logo, right? Uh, let me start out with an easy question. All right. And you could just answer it like in your head, you know, if you want to answer it in the chat, that's fine. But just kind of, let's get our brain kind of moving. All right, especially it's Monday, like this is going to be a good week this week. All right. So, of course, we got to get it like moving right now. All right. So the num the first question is. How many colors? This is a very basic question. All right. How many colors do we have in this logo? So this should take you like five seconds. Right. We got the green. We got the black. We got the gray. We got the white. Right. Cool. Right. Cool. Cool. All right, easy day, right? Easy day. Now, how many borders do we have? Okay, so a border, just kind of like something that wraps around our design from beginning to end, All right? So here, if I zoom in, All right, I got the green, I got the black, All right? So anytime we have borders and we have two colors touching each other, all right? So we have two borders plus the color inside, 
right? But we have two borders. So you can see anytime we have colors butting each other, so we have the green and the black butting each other, and then we have this black with this gray butting each other, then we have black again. So we have a lot of overlap, right? You see all that overlap that we have? Up here, okay, we have the green on top, black right in the middle. Then we have the white here, all right? Anytime we have colors butting each other, what is the number one bad thing that's gonna happen to our design? Or possible, what, 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 what possibility are we going to have, right, when two colors are butting each other? All right, of course, we're gonna have gaps. So that's where our gaps come out. And look at how many colors we have, right? We have a lot of overlaps. So especially when I looked at this design, that's the first thing that I'm looking at is, is looking, hey, what, where are my critical areas, right? Critical areas would be your areas of, of overlaps. All right, now you're looking at, now let's break up this piece. All right, let's break up the piece. Okay. Um, well, we could see the eye here. Look at this eye. A lot of details in the eye, All right? You know this is gonna give us a headache. All right, you know this eye right here is gonna give us a headache. This green on the eyeball, gonna give it and then all this little small detail you see all this detail definitely is gonna give us a lot of challenges here all right now we're out of our comfort zone this is definitely not your average logo here right it's not like the apple logo where the apple logo is like so super easy all right now we're going into difficult territory right here all right Actually, on my design, I forgot to put, now that I'm looking at it, I forgot to put this part of the design. But it's all good. All right. It's all good. Make that change right there. All right. Now, let me ask you one more question, right? Uh, we're going to go through a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things that I want to kind of highlight and show you because this is type of stuff that uh, if we see it here, we're definitely going to see it in other designs. So if you are, if you are struggling with certain designs not overlapping all right uh this design here will really kind of show you how to go about and overcome these overlaps all right now looking at this part the white portion of his of his feathers right the white portion how many objects do you see in these feathers because we got to break these feathers up right if these are sand stitches how many feathers, these white portion, do we have? All right, so just this is, um, right? So this bottom one, right? You could just kind of see my handprint right there. That's one right here. This one here, two, three. All right, and then we got this big one up here. Big ones are nice for sand stitches, especially if we're dealing with, um, 3D puffs. All right. And let me show you. Bam. Let me show you something real quick. Really, when I'm when I'm analyzing this design, okay? Because you can't really just think about it in your head. I got some of my notes right here. I actually turn it into a vector and I separate the colors. Right? I separate the colors. And I'm thinking, what is what is my moves gonna be, right? Like, what are what are my moves? So, for the white and the gray, these are like the notes that I have right here. All right, I just changed the color so you could see it. Right. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, I think you got a good view. See, bam, right there. But notice how I broke it up, right? I use a pencil so it could be nice and easy to uh, in case I need to erase something. But notice how I counted them. So up here on the top, 
I counted um one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just on the feathers, right? Not counting the eye portion. Right. So this kind of gives me an idea because if we're just trying to freestyle it, if we're just trying to freestyle it on the on the screen, on the digitizing screen, all right, it's gonna be a little difficult. And this way we could kind of um, fix up our shapes right here. Now, and then this part is the gray. The bottom part is the gray. All right. This was like my initial one. I did change some stuff up, like this part here, this part of the gray, which is like very small in my design. I kind of changed that up. But for the most part, this is how I'm breaking up my designs. All right. I take my logos into uh, Illustrator and then I vectorize them, All right? So very useful. I would say if um, if you're working on a project, like it's a big one, you know it's gonna, it's gonna bring a lot of future business. It's, I would say it'd be, it would be wise to have files vector format, right? Um, just because it's so easy to break it down. All right, and then my borders, I don't have any drawings right here, but you can see kind of how I have my borders, right? So this top part, this is the green part of the design. And then this part is the black part of my design. So let me see if I pull it up, All right? So you can see like the green part and the black part, All right? So I got a good view. And, I, and what I like to do, I like to add my stitch angles. Right. So I'm like, um, I think I spend more time analyzing the design than I do actual actually digitizing. OK, because I'm here, I'm breaking it up into pieces. And really, there, there's probably digitizers that can just freestyle this right away. Right. They've done so many that they already know how to break stuff up in their head. But sometimes if you haven't done one exactly like this. Right. So like I said, speed, uh, the level of difficulty is always based, it's always relative based off experience. So the more times you do it, okay? So now that I have this file, right? And like in my brain, locked in my brain, I have my notes. If I get something similar, all right? I'm kind of like pulling information from before. All right, now let me pull out let me pull uh, this information here, okay? Now, something else that I like to do, all right? So I got a lot of like small little tricks that I use to kind of help me, not only in the digitizing, but how to, how to see a design in, in embroidery, okay? Because a lot of times I, you can't just freestyle this information, right? Um, you can't just see a logo and determine 100% sure where all the stitch angles are at. Sometimes you need to see an example, all right? And what I like to do, some of you already know this, of course, I like to, my favorite website, all right? One of my favorite websites, nfl.com. And if there is a logo that you just want, like you're curious to know how they digitized it or, you know, stitch angles. If you think of a, like of a, a mask on, you're like, hold on, let me see how they made this one, right? What I like to do, I have a library. I have a library of photos, okay? I, me, I like to collect embroidery photos. Like that's my hobby. Instagram, I follow a lot of hat companies, a lot of uh, hat collections. Um, yeah, a lot of hat collectors that be posting hats all day, okay? And I'm just snapping pictures all day and I have like my own personal library that I just keep like information, all right? So this one here, okay, this one is really like the more expensive one. This is about like 65 bucks, right? Of course, this is the limited edition one here, all right? But what I like about it that we could actually zoom in Right, we could zoom in right here. Now, if we need to see stitch angles, okay, 
I could see exactly like if I'm struggling somewhere and I'm like, hey, what stitch angle did they use? Or more important, how did they cut up these feathers? All right. So, of course, I'm looking at the way they cut up his um, the feathers of the head, the white portion. All right. So even if we're kind of confused how to break it up, here's a little clue on how to go about it. All right. So, of course, a big thing that I'm looking at is how did they break up a piece? So. So here, our white is all in one piece. All right. But sometimes we got to get a clue or some information and see, hey, how did the professionals do it? How did they break up this piece right here? Right, so then we use here and it's showing you. All right, showing you here. And you can learn a lot from samples that you see online. Okay, you could even see, you can even say, you can even save like bad pictures because you could be like, okay, that didn't work. That stitch angle didn't work. All right, so of course we can, we could see how they broke up the objects. We can also see our stitch angles. For example, here in this corner, see how much I could zoom in. All right, we are super zoomed in on this corner. So if you see where my hand is at, my pan hand, see that? All right. When you zoom in, you start seeing like little small imperfections. All right. You could you could analyze it. There's no such thing as a perfect stitch out or a perfect digitizing, you can always make something better. All right, here, all right, they probably could have used the, the dab nab, snap nab, whatever you call it, right? The snap nab, of course, that's my favorite tool for situations like that, because you have like a little loose thread right here. They could just pull that in. But what I'm looking at is the stitch angle. So if you see this corner, we have a triangular, corner right here so really this is broken into three pieces we have one piece coming in here we got one piece here and then we got the triangle closing up that triangle closing up this corner all right and then you can look at the overlap all right we got excellent overlap all right this is 3d puff so we can't really judge our overlap on the black up here, right? Because it could be that the 3D is just blocking some of this black uh, border here, all right? Eyes, we can see the eyes. And if you compare it to our regular picture, okay? Notice our regular picture, the green goes all around perfect, right? It goes all around perfect. Right, we have this white portion of the eye in the in between with some black part of the eyes. Right, of course, there's proper terms, right? Like pupil. I'm just calling it kind of. You kind of understand the colors that I'm calling out. Okay, when we look at our example here, all right, you can see the green. It really doesn't perfectly go around. Right, you can see how our green does. But from a distance, you probably won't even catch that, right? If you're standing like from right here, you might not catch that it didn't go all the way around. Okay, of course, little small imperfection. There's always going to be little small imperfections. You just got to give yourself some, some space, right? Three feet of space, at least. Normal is six feet, but to analyze, Usually three feet, like hand hand distance. Okay, um, here we kind of lose our our black border a bit. Let me see how the picture is. All right, we got our black border. Should be the same size as our the two um, borders. Should be the same distance, right? But of course, overlap will do that to you. Right, you kind of lose that black portion. 
they they actually have three borders. This is actually the correct. This is the official logo. They have an extra border border here, right? So I forgot to mention that here. In that picture that I have, so this one. Okay, this picture actually has the white border, but since it's a white background, you can't see that white border, right? But it's actually there, and they put it here. So of course, that's like more points for them because they have three borders. They're working with three borders right here. Now, what is the big advantage that these companies have when they're doing logos? Because sometimes we're so hard on ourselves, right? Sometimes we like we beat ourselves up like, oh man, look at this. Look at like the stuff that they make here and look at my stuff, right? The advantage that of course uh, the big hat companies have is they're actually stitching on a flat fabric. Okay, so before it's even made, they're, they're, they're creating it. So they have that small, tiny advantage. Actually, it's not even a small advantage. They got that big advantage over us. Okay, so they all they do, but we gotta make up for it, right? We gotta we gotta work a little harder and adjust our designs a little bit more to compensate when we when we stitch out on a rounded portion. All right, just as an FYI. All right, all right, let's go back. Now, this is one this is one design, and another thing that I like to do. All right. This is a good question here because I'm just about to talk about this. So, Cindy, if you were doing this on a black cap, could you leave the black thread out having the cap fill in for the black? All right. So let me answer your question here. All right. Thank you for your question. You're always like one step ahead of me. All right. Especially with the questions. You guys are always one step ahead of me. So when I when when I collect these photos, OK, of course, I like to see it in different thread colors, different designs different hat styles all right so this one here is like your your um your main your main design right now we have alternate versions alternate colors so let's check out some alternate colors or or hat styles okay here all right a lot of times you zoom in and you'll i'm telling you you'll see little small imperfections right you'll see little like thread loops Right? Don't think these companies are making them 100% perfect. All right? But for the most part, right, when you're when you're regular distance three feet away, they are perfect. It's just when you zoom in, right? For example, here we got like a little piece of thread kind of hanging out right there, right? No big deal, All right? But so, I know sometimes people really really uh, go hard on themselves because they got like a small little imperfection, All right? Like here, so usually on the Right here on the center of the crown, right? So the center, you might see imperfections, right? So here you see a gap. And this usually happens because the center usually pulls the thread a little different. Okay, but for the most part, it's all good. All right, so this was the uh, same version, but kind of like on a dad hat. All right, but we could always study stitch angles. So you can see stitch angles. And of course, I'm eventually going to do this on a 3D puff. All right, you can see here what they what what colors they made first and what colors they left for last. Right, of course, the 3D puff is is going to be the last thing they're going to stitch out. So you can see the beak and the white feathers as the 3D puff. That's going to be the last portion of this design. Right. And of course, if you want even a better version of this, you would just buy your own hat and really analyze it like in person. All right, so bam, let's zoom out here. Let's go to another one. All right, now we got a black cap, same logo. All right, but it's kind of like different. You can kind of see it a little different. So we're kind of just looking at the overlap, stitch angles, what kind of stitches they used. All right. So this is like my like this is my form of uh, photography that I like to see, like on Instagram, like some people like to see funny memes. Right. Everybody has their own their own personal things they like to see on Instagram. 
me is hats. Like I like to um, search hat collectors. All right, it's like a big, it's like a big world genre is the world of hat collecting. Okay, so you see a lot of the uh, different colors, like normal colors that you don't see in the stores. Uh, some people have it like released it. All right, well actually we could we could see it here. These um sharp. Okay, you see these sharp turns here. Okay, this is what I want to focus on. Usually sharp turns can create headaches. All right, so here I'm kind of seeing what did they do. Right here, kind of seeing that one corner that we we're talking about before. All right. You'll kind of see when I mention it, these corners, how much of a headache could be. Because look, you're going one side up here. You're traveling one side and then you cut super sharp corner into this corner, another super sharp corner. All right. So can can give us headaches. All right. Now we got a black and white version. So you can see that. And sometimes different colors give you like different uh, different looks, different stitch angles. Uh, but you could kind of tell from the corners, a little similar from before. All right, so let me just show you some other colors, but I have a ton of. And of course, this is the black on black, All right? This one looks super cool right here. All right, really the 3D puff is what, what makes it pop out right here. And black on black will forever be like, one of the most fan favorite hats of all time. All right, people always love black on black. And even though it's black on black, the lighting, the shade, you could kind of see the breakdown of how it looks. All right. Then, bam, look at this one. All right, this one here, you could you could you could look at a lot of the stitch angles with this color. All right, you can see a lot of what's going on right here. All right, and the corners. When we're looking at stitch angles, we really focus on these corners up here. All right, so I'm looking at how, how they did theirs here. All right, I actually did mine a little different. So I'm going to show you how I did mine. You can see this corner here. Eyes, right? It's easier for them because they don't have all those colors on the eyes, but for the most part, they got a good wrap around here. All right, beak looks solid. All right. And this one, this one's cool on the camo, camo hat. All right, same colors as before. Three, two borders with the black border, so three borders. Then we have this one here. This one's real cool because look at this 3D puff right here. All right, I think on this one, their 3D puff is a little bigger than their normal, than their other ones. They're kind of going a little bigger. But you can see how the now the beak and the feathers, they're all one color. So for of course, we could change things up, all right? Especially if you have a customer logo. All right, before I go to this last one, I have one more picture to show you. All right, the best thing to, best thing about embroidery that I think, especially when you have, um, when you're like in good communication with your customers, right? You can always show them such something like this, like, hey, check out this version that I made for you, right? They won't even expect that. They'll be like, oh, wow, I didn't even think about that, all right? So you can always show them different versions uh, black on black, right? Something like this, where all the 3D puff is all the same with a with similar background. Okay, it's all about imagination. There's always different versions of logos that you can make. Okay, for the most part, I know in print companies they don't want to mess with their logos. Like they don't want you to change not even a little shade of their Pantone color, right? They're like, no. We want it like this. And if it's like off by a couple of numbers of Pantone, right, they're going to send it back. But in embroidery, I think a lot of times once we do have their colors and their logos on point, then we could kind of shift and give them options such as this. All right. So that's the good thing about embroidery. 
All right, let me show. I think I have one more picture. And we have this funky looking one, all right? This one is real crazy looking, right? Uh, I like this one because now the colors pop out. Like they, they're using contrast colors. Now I can really see stitch angles right here, all right? So everything that was hiding, right? Some of the colors were too dark or some of them were too bright before. Now I can really see these stitch angles, right? You can see these corner stitch angles here. All right. And what I notice is that different hats, they do have different designs. Like they change slightly. Okay. So there might be, I don't think they have like one master file that everybody has to use. I think they have a similar one. And every now and then they'll have like something small, right? Only if you understand embroidery and you follow embroidery, you might catch it, right? The normal human eye or the normal consumer might not catch it. Okay, because here, look at our corner here on the red. All right, we don't have that we don't have that uh, triangle corner here now, right? Like we did before. All right, and let's see the eyes. Okay, the eyes. You can see how the the pink really doesn't wrap around the eye perfectly. Right, they got like a piece of thread hanging out, but from a diff, but from a distance, you might not even catch that. And then you got a jump here, right? You see this jump right here, like the foam is bubbling, All right? And this is straight from their their website, right? Like this is the version they probably had different versions of this hat, and they chose this one as their best one. So who knows what other hats they had, right? But here. Right. And really, it's because we're like zooming in this much. Right. Nobody's going to zoom in this much unless you're like a, a hat junkie. Right. Which I'm definitely zooming in that much. But for the most part, we're, we're at this level right here. All right. All right. And then, bam. All right. Now. Let's transition to our file. All right, bam, bam. All right, have a good night. I know East Coast, you guys are super late, right? You guys are super nighttime. Uh, videos, of course, always available for replay. I like to see the replay because I like to see like things that I mentioned and then um, research more about certain things that I mentioned, right? Uh, there's no, there's no, it's impossible to talk about everything, right? But sometimes you can make some notes and kind of uh, dig deeper into certain subjects. All right. And then that black on black, yeah, it looks creepy on black. Yeah, it looked weird, huh? Um, all right, cat skills. All right, getting in late. All right. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, all right, cool. I think we're good with questions. Um, all right, let's keep on going. Let me go into the software. All right, so this is the file that I have on my hat right here. All right, so again, let me show you before I go, before I push play on this, just so you guys can now see, right? Now that we saw some samples of hats, things that I'm looking at. Right, it's super bright. I have my lights right here, but kind of see. Right, we're looking at corners. We're looking for gaps. All right. So I'm gonna push play, and I'm gonna kind of go uh, in slow motion and kind of go over certain things. All right. I like to show like different angles. Because sometimes thread looks different when you when you move it. All right. All right. Now, let's. I'm gonna kind of go play by play. Talk about what's happening. All right. Before I push play, if you were in my shoes, 
All right, if you were in my shoes, right, I, you kind of get a clue by looking at the design right here, right? You kind of get a clue. All right. What would you say is the first, the first object or the first color or the first part of the design that I'm gonna stitch out? Like, where am I gonna start? Like, we gotta we gotta keep our uh, digitizing cap on. If we were to start, right? That, I think that's the hardest part. Uh, sometimes you could save that for last, like when you do your sequence. Okay. If we are looking at our design, where am I starting? Like, what is my starting point? And usually, usually where the part, the part you want to start, especially, um, especially the final stitch out okay because digitizing you could always start anywhere it doesn't matter because you could change the sequence later all right and then just as a fyi all right thank you for bringing this up cindy this one here is flat okay this design here the one that i have on my hat is flat i am going to change it to a 3d puff i just wanted to make sure this one here is good all right so this is a flat design no 3D puff, all right? So a lot of the rules, it's a little bit more lenient with the rules, all right? So usually when, we, when we're when we talking about the order of the final stitch out, whatever is on the backside of the design, right? The background, the background. And then we, we got to determine what's on top of what. What is on top of what? The last part should be whatever's closer to the actual viewer, right? So we got to think like that. Also, I wanted to make sure that our black border was actually covering our design here. Okay, and then T-Town, what would you turn into puff? So I would do it just like the pictures that we looked, that we saw, uh, the, the beak and the uh, white feathers. So those two, those parts, the gray, the gray, the dark gray beak and uh, the seven feathers that we have right there. All right. It's actually a real simple uh, setting change, all right, that we can easily add right there. All right. So if I'm looking at my, let me bring up my sequence docker. Uh, color object list. All right, so this is my sequence up here. All right, so I got my gray first. So let's let's do this. Hide others. This is going first. All right, I'm doing the beak uh, right now just because I want that black border to cover it uh, clean. All right. Now, there is no right or wrong answer. There's somebody that could start with black first and then go gray. All right. But for the most part, OK, for the most part, you want to go with what makes sense. All right. Then next, I got the black. All right. But I'm actually breaking the black into. Into uh, two pieces. So this is going to go first. Uh, hide others. So right after that gray, I'm putting this part of the black because I want to save that last border for last. Okay. And then after I do this black part, now I'm doing the white feathers. Hide others. Bam, right there. All right. And then... I'm doing this green, the green border. Hide others. Man, look at this one here. And you can see how many pieces I broke up this. You can see how many pieces I have this border broken up. To. Right, you see some branching here on my corners. Right, so you see this corner has some branching because I kind of broke it up into two pieces and then I branch it to convert it into one piece. And then you could see how some of these pieces 
right? The shape has to be created different because when you stitch it out, it has a different push pull, right? It's like a, a, a balancing game. Here in this corner, same thing. Got my corners here. And then here, I got my triangle corner that we were analyzing with the other designs. So you can see how I have three pieces to this corner. I have this first part coming down here. Then I got the corner and I got that, right? And then when they finally stitch out, they kind of come in as one piece. They look like one piece. All right, bam, and then just breaking pieces, um, corners into pieces. For example, here I made it, I made this corner. Actually, I broke this one up and then this one up too. So this is a broken corner here, broken corner. They're all broken just so I could get a smooth transition, except for here, I got one solid corner right here. All right, going one piece. All right, after the green, I have, now I have this part, the black, um, hide others. All right, now I got this part, right? Now that the green is laid down, the white is laid down, the gray is laid down. Now I lay down this. This is really where the details pops out, okay? That's why I wanna keep it for last. To keep the details, you can see the eyes, how it's broken up. All right. And then the final piece of the pie all right, let's see if you remember what the final piece of the pie is. And that is, hide others, the eyes. All right, so if we look at how small this eye is, M, let's go into metric. All right, one millimeter. So we're talking about super tiny, tiny, tiny. And I have it, I have it doing a regular sand stitch. And then it comes back for a second second try. So let me just tell you what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm gonna let everything play, but I just wanna show you the eyes, the last part of the eye. All right, so it's gonna do the eye. It's gonna do this part here. Then it's gonna come back and boomerang and do the same thing, All right? Just to make that eye pop, kind of like optional, something that I kind of, Decide last minute. All right. But you can see the piece of the eye here. And then let's unhide all. All right. I'm going to push play. I'm going to play it slow and kind of go over it, kind of like my train of thought was happening. All right. But before I press start, all right. So, what we talked about, big thing here is breaking our pieces into piece breaking our design into pieces all right because when we have a regular logo we're gonna have like one flat image but of course we got to work within sand stitches or fill stitches of course sand stitches is going to make our design pop out that's why these feathers should be sand stitches now can you make it a flat yeah but your design is going to look super flat so by giving it sand stitches in certain areas we give it dimensions Okay, so that's the main thing about design, uh, satin, satin stitches, borders, and to emphasize certain designs. All right, so we really went into uh, the detail of uh, sequence, kind of like determining what's um, what should go first. All right, everything is relative, depending on what you think, but usually common sense is always going to trump. Okay, we always want to use our common sense, what's what's in the background, and move our way forward to the final part of our um, design. Okay, of course we could have made the beak last because we want to make it pop out, but in this situation, I want that black border to make it stand out. All right, all right, let's go ahead, let's push playing. All right now. One more, one more. Before I push play, now, how many cuts do you think we have? 
Okay, because you already know me. Unnecessary trims is like it makes me want to like punch a hole in the wall. Okay, I hate unnecessary trims. I will go back, spend half an hour to an hour to fix one trim if I know that I'm going to stitch this design over and over and over. Not saying that I'm going to stitch out this one, but just any logo in general. If I'm seeing something stitch out and there's a trim that could be removed, I will go back and I will spend. Whatever it takes, okay? Of course, we got to use our judgment, right? Sometimes just leave a trim. Um, we'll catch it some other time, right? But for the most part, if we're going to do something over and over and over and over and over and over, all right, trims, they just make everything work smooth. And usually, thread breaks, needle breaks, stuff happens during the trim, tie-in, tie-outs, okay? That's when usually stuff happens, all right? And then let's see how many trims I have. Let's put the uh, information. This is my favorite page in my digitizing software because it's feeding me information. It's telling me everything that I have to know. Okay. So we go to information. So this design. Okay. Let's go metric. Uh, see how big it is. Color object. Oh, so height 2.3, all right? So 2.3, pretty good size, all right? If you're like a Super Ego fan, you might want to go 2.5, right? And if you're like a Super Hardcore fan, right, you might want to go 3, right? All right. I might I might go to lids tomorrow and just check what their size is just so I know if if it's either bigger or smaller. All right. I got to go check that out. Unless somebody has an ego hat, uh a 3D puff starter, not starter, uh new era. All right. Cuts, trims, six trims, all right? Six trims. 1 2 3 4 5 6. So on every color change, there's a trim. All right, cool. And of course, the number one way to eliminate trims, of course, sequence, putting your colors together, but using uh, walking, walking stitches, right? A simple walk to the next object will save you from unnecessary stitches. All right, All right. let's push play on this. Bang. All right, so. I could uh, put the picture on and off. All right, so for the first part, we're doing the gray, all right? This is just like a little small detail near the eyes, all right? There's a little small detail in the eyes. I probably didn't need this much of a fill, all right? But I do have sand stitches on top of that, so I don't want to have any gaps. Here I'm doing the beak, it's all in one piece. So as an underlay, you could see there, since my stitch is here, look, here it gets pretty long, right? It's going to stretch out pretty long. Uh, stitches in that area is pretty long. So uh, as an underlay, I have a outer edge and a zigzag. All right, now you see how it walked to this corner? Because it's about to walk to the next object, all right? So now it says, hey, I'm ready to go to the next object. And it's going to do this part. This is a fill. So these fields, they have a uh, edge run with a tatami. Since it's a field tatami, I use a tatami underlay that's running perpendicular to itself. All right, so let's speed this up because this is about to go uh, rinse and repeat. So it just walked to the next area. It's going to do the same thing. Uh, you can see the stitch angle that I'm using here. I want to end it right there in that corner. It walked to that end and it's going to close it up here just so I could walk to my next location. Okay. Uh, Wilcom does a pretty good job on closing this gap right here. You see how it's going to walk to the next area? I know there's uh, some people struggle with fill stitches when they, um, when they end in the center, like they'll get a gap. I don't know what the setting you need, but for I know for Wilcom, they do a pretty good job closing that gap 
So here, like, this is what I'm talking about right now. It's going to close this gap. I know some people get holes right here. But not here because it, it, it went straight through. Okay. But you'll see in, in, from the earlier ones. All right. But you shouldn't have any gap. If you're having gaps there, it's probably a, a setting that's there. All right. Here we got our last. Fill stitch gray portion, and you can see how those sand stitches are going to be right on top of it. All right, that's fine. I'm not trying to. I'm I'm going to allow those sand stitches to be right on top, and then I want to end right in this corner. Okay, reason why I want to end in this corner, because this black part, this black sand stitch, it's going to cover this corner right here. Okay, that overlap. All right, let me see if I could show. Trying to show you. All right, you can kind of see it, but it's gray, so you can't see it that good. All right, let's keep it like this. All right, now next I have my black. All right, I have this part, these longer sand stitches. So this is gonna cover, and then I have the white sand stitches on top of this black. That's why I'm doing this one next. Okay, bam, it's gonna do that part. All right, so here I have a center run with a zigzag underlay, all right? It's just doing portion by portion. So it walked here, it's gonna close back up here. All right, and then it's just gonna walk. Yeah, so this part was one, one full corner. All right, stopped here, cut, all right? Now I'm gonna do my white sand stitches. Okay, white sand stitches. That's really like the, this is really where the details, okay? This is where we can really slip up is this overlap here, all right? I am going to break up this uh, sand stitch in a bit, but I want to show you, all right? So I'm starting here, that bottom one, doing this long one. So same thing here, I have a outer run with a zigzag underlay, and then I'm, I'm Cautious about that overlap. You see that overlap? We definitely don't want to have gaps. Okay. This part I'm doing the eyes. You can see how it did those eyes. Bam. Going back. So you see my overlap here. Make sure I have enough overlap. Okay. Now it's going to walk to the next one. Bam. Walk to the next one. Same thing. So it's a lot of it is just rinse and repeat. But we are cautious about our overlaps here. And I'll show you how I go about adding extra overlap. All right, you already know I'm a big fan of the pull, pull, push, pull, or the pull compensation. The way I see uh, the pull compensation is like using a thicker marker. All right, it's useful when in situations like this where we have satin with butting up against satin. All right, so here we got, this is two sand stitches together and it was branched together just so I could do this here. This part right here, add this part. All right, cool, look at that. Now I have a nice area for that black backdrop. So you see how that back Gonna just cover that. All right, we need that overlap here. Bam, same thing. I finished here because I'm gonna have black overlap on this side right here. All right, cool. So let's see how we're looking so far. All right, so so far we are at 6,656 stitches. All right, pretty big size, so it's 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 pretty good uh, stitch wise. All right, we're going pretty wide, and I'll show you how wide we're going in a bit. All right, next, now we have our border, okay? We have our border next. This is where I really broke it up into detail here, right? So I'm starting here, and 
here simple center underlay all right all one shot right there okay but these corners i kind of pause you're going to see here when i get to this next corner the way i broke it up into pieces so it goes creates this corner bam all right so you see like that movement there just to create those corners there. Really, when you stitch it out, it looks like one, one corner, two corners, right? The bottom and the top. All right. Then we let it go. Bam. Then we do our three corner or three part corner right there. And you see this gap that's here? That's where our black is going to rest at. Right in between there. So our, we already made the black in this part, so we're just covering the black in this portion. All right, bam. So just as a reminder, I'm gonna stitch this out again tomorrow. I'm just gonna make some little small tweaks. Uh, I'm gonna stitch it out. I'll probably do a uh, like a short video or just a regular video. But I do want to show you guys how it looks when it stitches out, uh, and then I'll put the file for download. Um, so you could come in, dissect it, right? You already know the settings that I like to mess with. I like to mess with pool comp, especially to cover those uh, gaps or potential gaps. Uh, my underlays that you can kind of see here. So a lot of times there's there's uh, settings that you can't really see by eye, right? Here you can see the underlay. You can kind of tell what underlay I'm using, but you can't really tell um any you can't really tell like the the density right even though my density is all like uh just regular 0.38 but you can't tell the pool comp all right now we have our black so now it's looking doesn't look complete right we need the final icing on the cake that is the border right here okay so push play bam we start here around the beak all right so one of the changes that i want to make I'm telling you that I have a I have a little fix that I want to do on this design. It's this part right here that I'm doing right now. This part of the beak, you see how it's super rounded? In this type of area, that's where you see this part right here, right here, as it's making that curve. So I either got to make the black part go more out or the gray part go out. So I'm, I think I'm just going to make the gray come in a bit. I got to expand it a bit. Right, because I'm getting like a slight, it's not too much of a gap, but it's it's enough to kind of bother me with that gap right there. All right. And then we did we finished that bottom part there, just so we don't lose lose that green gap right there or that green border. And now this is a detailed portion right here. All right. Over here, we're doing like the eye portion. I didn't put no underlay because we already have enough thread down there. Then we got that part. This is all small detail portion. Okay, a lot of it is just sequence, and at the very end, using the the closest uh, closest joint to avoid cuts. Then, if there are cuts, just go back and kind of fix my start stops. All right. So now you see how this black is going to be carefully. In that corner, okay, that corner, I had to do a, a little bit of tweaking just because I want that sharp corner to be there without going too small on my sand stitches. All right, and just close. Right, like right here, it doesn't look like they're going to close up, but at the very end, the stitches close up so it looks like one solid stitch. Bam, finishes right here. Okay, I could. I could end this tie off on this right hand side, but I think I'm good there. All right, I think I'm good there. So now the last part is the eyes. So like kind of like where we started. Let's slow it down. All right, this is just detail. This then uh, this is the super uh, ice on the cake here. It's gonna go here. All right, small. So we measured it. It would measure like 1.07, so one millimeter, so super tiny. 
All right. So I made it go two two laps. So I boomerang get back. Uh, I could have seen how it looked just on one, but I'm good with two right there just so it could kind of stand out. All right. So that's kind of this design in a nutshell. All right. Let's see the size of it. All right. Let's see what's the size of this. So with 3.5, all right. So you can see how it has like a sharp angle on like the diagonal is pretty sharp. Um, so it's a good size, 3.5. I think it'd be perfect for a shirt, for a bag, especially for a hat. So you see how I have it here. All right, it's just small tweaks. Like no matter what, I, I, I always stitch out a design. And I'm going to make little small tweaks because, of course, we want it to be as clean, perfect. And sometimes there are changes that nobody is going to know. But us as embroiderers, like we know, right? We know exactly what we're seeing. All right. All right. Bam, bam. I think my face turned red. I don't know my face turned red right now. I was out in the sun today. Actually, grilling. All right. When you're from Cali, easy to grill. All right. All right. Let me see. We got some good questions here. All right. So we had some guests who was, um, what was going to go first, second, third. All right. Uh, all right. I do appreciate the comments. All right. Um, do appreciate Diana. Learn so much every time I watch. And believe it or not, all right, believe it or not, I learn a lot by teaching, okay? Because there's times where sometimes we do things in embroidery just because we were told to do so, right? Somebody's like, hey, how do I do this? Somebody said, hey, do it like this. And we've never changed it since that time that somebody told us to do it like this. But sometimes we want to know why. Why are we doing it something like this? Or can we change it? What happens if I change it? All right. So by teaching the class, uh, there's always a thousand different ways to do something. Uh, I always show you the way I like to do it. I like to um, try to be as efficient as possible. OK, there probably is better ways to do it, but would require more cuts. And I'm, I'm all for being as efficient as possible. All right. But I do learn uh, by presenting information, too. So I do appreciate uh, the comment. All right. Uh, let's see. Bam, bam. All right. There were some good guesses here. Then uh, Diana, how many layers do you try to determine for any embroidered piece? And how many layers? Is fewer or more? Yeah. You want to have at, at very least layers on top of each other. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to break it like perfectly. Sometimes it's just like, hey, we're going to throw a sand stitch on top of it. All right. We could. And then, yep, perfect. Perfectly set here. So building on the bottom colors, when you throw that sand on top, stands out. Okay, it stands out. So usually flats, fill stitches on the bottom, sand stitches on top. Perfectly said right there. All right. Javier, Alice, Texas. All right. We got everybody in the house today. All right. Oh, we got Dallas in the house. All right. All right. And then these two comments. All right. Efficiency. All right. Especially in production. All right. In production. Needle breaks, bird nesting, all that crazy stuff that happens in embroidery usually happens tie-ins, tie-outs, stops, trims, when the machine stops and it has to like readjust. Also, you get you get crazy stuff at weird angles. Okay, so here we did have some weird angles. Um, we want to avoid like angles that is going to potentially bend our needle, OK? 
Okay, if the stitches are too close to each other while it's turning, okay, you, you have a chance that it's gonna break. That's why my borders here, the outside border, I had broken it up into pieces. So when it's about to change uh, angles, I'm not, I'm gradually changing that angle. I'm not just, you know, tight, tight stitches at, and moving my design. And then um, this is what it's all about, right? I do appreciate this comment. Uh, the thinking process and developing an embroidery mindset, right? So notice, right, when we started today, I showed you a picture where we kind of analyzed the picture. Then we went to actual stitch outs. So professional stitch outs from, right, uh, from the major leagues or the National Football League, right? Uh, we checked out the professionals, how they do it. Different version, not just one version. And we saw that different versions have different tweaks, different designs. Uh, different colors kind of get, kind of have a different view. And then we have it on paper, right? A lot of times, a lot of this is not necessary, okay? Maybe on this design, right? When I broke it up into here, right? A lot of times, a lot of this not necessary. I, I like to do this if I have a new design that I'm working on, and I want to, and I want to, and I want that design to, especially the sand stitches, to pop out as much as possible. Right. So, the thinking process and the embroidery mindset, perfectly said right there. All right. We got Louisiana in the house. Q D B D. South Bend, Indiana. All right. I already know it's cold over there. Um, and then, yep, just like I said, okay, I'm learning so much from you. Really appreciate it. Just like I said in the beginning, right? I go back, I look at the videos, and I learn myself too, right? I'm, I'm explaining things is different from just doing because sometimes I could just zone out, digitize. And if I don't have to explain anything, right, I just move on to the next thing. But when you when you have to stop and just and just and explain something, like your brain retains that information even more. All right. So do appreciate that one. All right. And then sometimes I do the border and send it to the back. So I can see where to digitize the other layer. Yeah, it all depends where you want that border. Okay, where do you want it? Do you want it in the back? Sometimes it is easier um, to put it first. Okay, it's all. It all depends. If you put something on top of it, so a border could do two things. It could cover. So let's say you have a circle, right? You have a circle of a fill stitch. A border could easily cover, right? The the, the edges, so it doesn't look all jaggedy give it a nice dimension, bold look, all right? Or um, like how you're saying, I think if it's uh, satin with satin, like two satins together, then the outer one could go first and then the inner one could could overlap the outer one and it'll kind of blend in perfectly. Um, possible, right? Possible. It all depends the design, all right? And then this is, this is the big one that I do, all right? Maybe in the future, all right, uh, one thing that I don't really show on the channel is me using Illustrator, all right? That's a whole different beast. I don't wanna, yeah, that's a whole different uh, learning curve area, all right? Um, but I love to turn designs into vectors and sometimes I'll take it into the embroidery software and it's easier to digitize like that. Uh, maybe I can transition one day and talk about Illustrator, especially logos. Uh, logos is a big part of embroidery. So maybe I, I touch on that sometimes, all right? Because every embroidery, especially the big embroideries, every logo, especially the big logos, they all have a story. There's all there's always somebody behind it, right? Usually there's a digitizer in the embroidery world, but in the graphic design world, there's a designer, graphic designers. All right, there's a lot of rock star graphic designers out there that I like to follow and maybe something in the future that I touch on. All right. Um, 
We got Montgomery, Alabama to have. All right. All right. All right. Um, so I'm going to look out for the video. It should be tomorrow if not, right? Of course, schedule is always crazy. Um, I am going to stitch this out. I'm going to have a video where I stitch it out. I'm just going to make a little tweak to it. Uh, I'm going to have the file available. I might just have the file available for like a limited time. Like it's not going to be available forever. So make sure you look out for that video dropping either uh, Tuesday, what's the day, Monday, either Tuesday or Wednesday, right? And if you're looking at this video like super in the future, right, it was available at some point, but be on the lookout for that one so you can study it. And maybe in the future, I turn this into a 3D puff, right? I love 3D puff. Uh, really, it, it shouldn't be too much. It's just the white and the and the beak change the density and then probably do a little tweaks in there. All right. So happy Monday, everybody. Hope, hope, hope your week is as strong, as productive, right? And as everything, right? Everything in the book. All right. Uh, any questions, any comments, leave it in the comments. Check out the description. I'm going to double check, make sure all my descriptions are good. But that way you could kind of see uh, stuff that I have around here in the shop. All right. So the next time, peace out, everybody.